A YouTuber bank. If you think this was a good idea, maybe Darwin was right. Today we're talking about a bank promoted by YouTubers that's now become a casino and users can't get their money out. <laughs> what do you mean it's a casino now? How does that even happen? This video is sponsored by Yada Save. Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Yada Savings? The Yada. Oh, it's all the big YouTubers that have multi-million a million subs. And this is the classic situation of they just got offered so much money they couldn't refuse because greed, obviously. When you're a millionaire, multi-millionaire, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's really hard to refuse a million or two just, that's just given for you free by something that most likely is a scam. But you're not even going to take five seconds to look at it and say, oh yeah, this this seems really bad because the money is just so appealing. And after this, after this video, they're probably all going to go and make apology tours, make videos. Guys, I know I promoted this blatantly scam thing. But it's not my fault, you see, because, you know, I didn't do enough research. Did I do any research? That's a different topic. Uh, it's it's going to be the classic one, two, three, isn't it? Yada Savings app. Maybe you saw a couple people talk about this. Yes, I have seen people talk about Yada recently. Hey, my name I have not seen a single person talk about Yada. I have never even heard this thing. It's Daniel, um, my wife and I, our family has 18,000 uh, in Yada. That we can't get out. Over sixty thousand dollars frozen up in Yada. Fifteen thousand four hundred forty dollars and six cents frozen Lose. in Yada. Okay, listen. I do not feel sorry for any of these people. They're probably some kind of degenerate crypto bros, or those people that believe that if you're not getting a one hundred percent return on investment, that's a bad investment. Okay, anything anything above ten percent is already sketchy AF. 5% return on investment, though, is not appealing nowadays, okay? And everything above 5% is probably a scam. Just just want to point that out on yearly return, okay? And most likely a 100% blatant SMH. It's $7,270.60 frozen. $583. $98,000 frozen in Yoda. Idiot. $94,000, give or take, frozen. 46000 these people are like the uh, like the group of people that got uh, scammed by Logan Paul's crypto zoo. Listen, okay? Scamming is not great and whatnot. Banking is evil at the end of the day. But if you got scammed by this or Logan Paul's crypto zoo, you just deserve it, okay? Anyone who put in money into Logan Paul's crypto zoo is either a complete idiot, two, he is probably a complete idiot, Three is definitely a complete idiot and wanted just an easy payout because I, I, I don't know what's going on in their heads. Okay, listen, Logan Paul did you a service by scamming you faster because it was only a matter of time before you lose all of your money and, I've, and need to start thinking about your actions and that maybe they have consequences. He just, he just expedited the process a little bit. $699. Yeah, it's a disaster, and we're going to break down what happened. Let's start with the basics. A few years ago, Yada Savings advertised itself as a no-lose lottery through YouTube. Play the no-lose lottery. Yeah, everyone who fell for this deserves it. I have no pity for a single moron. I, I, I just don't. If, if, if you ever see play is something that's even remotely close to play the no-lose lottery or get huge returns, double your money or anything like that, and you're thinking to yourself, yes, this seems good. You deserve everything that's coming your way. You just deserve, okay? I, I don't know what happened to the world, but there was a time, not even that long ago, you know, 15 years ago, when this was common knowledge that anything like this is just a blatant ripoff and you're going to lose your money. It was common knowledge. Now, this is like esoteric, this is, this is the most esoteric, prophetic thing to understand that this is a scam nowadays. Holy! Where you'd get a lottery ticket by saving money rather than spending it. It's called gamified savings. And some that already sounds horribly stupid. 
took it beyond a sponsorship and bought equity in the company because they liked the idea that much. The most viral example of this was Graham Stephan, who claimed that I bought a bank. I decided to invest an undisclosed amount, and now I can officially say I am a small owner in Yada Bank. Now these videos are deleted, as Yada mm. has become more than a harmless savings app, and users can't get their money out. Okay, I don't know how people don't know this, but this is how banks work, right? Banks take your money because you put it in bank, and then they take that money and invest into other things. That's how banks make money. I don't know how this concept is mind-blowingly complicated to understand for some people, but that's how it works. So yeah, any bank, every bank wants you to just keep your money in there because then they can use that money to buy God knows what. Probably, probably lottery tickets at this point. Now, but to understand what exactly happened, Let's first go back to when they demanded an apology from me back in 2022. They made a brief appearance in a video called The Most Evil Business in the World, and for some reason, they didn't like the cameo. They said, quote, wow. Given these false claims, we would like you to issue a statement in a video clarifying that your claim that Yada is a scam is false and misleading. Now, I never said that exactly, so I didn't apologize, but I found that... No, that's 100 the implication. Don't lie about that, coffee Zilla boy. Because your channel is about all of that. If you if you make a video about something and put it on the channel, everyone instantaneously assumes without watching it's a scam. Next bit, a bit more baffling. They tell me, quote, you could also conduct an interview with Adam Molis, the co-founder and CEO of Yada, if you wish, which I found mm. odd. Either way, I decided to today take them up on their offer. Two years later, when I checked back in on Yada and found customers' accounts have been frozen and their website looked more like a casino than a no-lose lottery. Oh, wow. On their app, Yada now offers roulette, dice, blackjack that you can lose money on. Now, honestly, I was shocked by this. This is the same company mm. that's saying, play the no-lose lottery, regular lotteries are scams, they prey on innocent people. Now they're offering gambling. So of course, I reached out to the CEO. And he told me Yada is not actually gambling. Quote, we decided to pivot the business into sweepstakes earlier this hmm. year. Sweepstakes is not gambling. We worked extensively with lawyers in the space to build out the program. Now, I don't know which lawyer told Yada blackjack isn't gambling, but it's time to get your money back. All Yada is really doing is running a loophole. The CEO says you can't actually buy Yada cash, but this is a very sneaky claim. What because one way cash? to get Yada cash is by purchasing tokens on the app. These tokens are pointless, except that they come with free Yada Cash. Spend $10, get 13 free mm. Yada Cash to gamble with. The more you spend, nice. the more free Yada Cash you get. It's really nice. just a stupid loophole. By the way, the fact that they, they, uh, they are offering this much for free means that their uh, odds are rigged beyond belief. It's it, Your chance to win is not... 49%. It's probably very less than that. The more free Yada Cash you get. It's really just a stupid loophole to claim that this is all a sweepstakes and that blackjack, dice, and roulette are somehow not gambling, which is, of course, ridiculous. But most interesting, I think, is the admission from the Yada CEO that, quote, yes, this is at odds with the initial mission to encourage savings. The savings-based business model wasn't working, so we decided to pivot. But oh, pivot boy. to what? To the exact thing your system was designed to fight stupid lotteries that waste people's money and you pivot to just do you want to bet everyone who put money into this is happy about this decision just getting people hooked on actual gambling is that it it's like me starting a methadone clinic only to pivot to selling heroin because that's where the real money is it's utterly ridiculous and i told their ceo as much and to my surprise he responded asking me for help quote you can make your own moral judgment of whatever you want, that's fine. But the issue that matters is that our customers haven't been able to access their funds for nearly three weeks. I think you can help. And honestly, what? he's right. I do want to help Yada's customers not getting their money, but I can't ignore that Yada is a savings app that became a casino, the exact thing they were fighting, and that's disgusting. Also, isn't there like a rule against this? That if you're one thing and you decide to uh, become another, you cannot deny withdrawals from people if they have money in you because they agreed to the first thing, but now you're just, you know, remaking it into another one. 
Two, YouTubers brought people into a financial product that is now broken, and rather than address it, most hey, not the first time. of them have gone radio silent. Some are deleting their original videos. Now, of course, most of these YouTubers who promoted it had no idea Yada was going to pivot from saving. Well, if Yada didn't pivot from savings, they would have probably already lost their money anyway, so that's not really a big deal. ...to gambling, or that users' accounts would be frozen. But this is all the more reason that YouTubers should not be getting in the business of promoting financial products, especially finance YouTubers. I've spoken to a lot of these people. They all tell me the same thing. Oh, I feel so bad. It's not my fault. I had no idea. And that's all fine. But when people bring up your name as an explicit reason they got into this savings account, it starts to ring a lot more hollow. So my brother actually told me about it. I'm pretty sure he found it through the Graham video. That would have been Graham Stephan. Uh, Stephen Graham video. Graham Stephan. Who was Stephen Graham? I, I recognize his name. Graham. Um, Stefan. And who is this guy supposed to be? Why is Graham Stephan famous? Graham Stephan born blah 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 is an American real estate agent and you- Oh, okay, got it. It's Graham Stephan video. Graham Stephan came out with a, uh, a video. Graham Stephan, Andre Jack, guys that I like as you know financial youtubers yeah oh god this is the reason i hold financial youtubers to a higher standard overwhelmingly i find them to be more influential although i have to say again i don't hold them or anyone else person anyone who deals with money and has a nice guy persona I instantaneously assume is uh, just out to scam you someday and i have been 100 percent through so far and i probably will be 100 percent correct until the end of my days. Personally responsible. I hold them all irresponsible for promoting financial products. This is not like promoting Dollar Shave Club, where people get a product and that's it. If the company goes bust, it doesn't matter. Financial products are different. You are asking people to put their money somewhere. If in five years that goes bust, people are going to remember you advertised it to them. And if you're uncomfortable with that, if you think your bank might blow up in five years, don't promote it. Shill a VPN and have a nice day. But if you insist on telling people the best place to put their money, you better not be upset when they listen. By the way, as I was editing this video, I would take the sponsorship deal and shill it without any problems. If my audience does not understand that any ad is bad, then well, that's on, on them, honestly. Someone released a podcast sponsored by, you guessed it, Yada. This episode is brought to you by Yada. This is despite the fact that currently withdrawals are frozen. And now I want to pivot myself and talk about frozen funds, which is a huge problem that goes beyond Yada and influencers. Since early May, many fintechs, including Yada and Juno and many others, have had all their user funds frozen. Up to 200,000 accounts are affected. And it's for many reasons okay. that surprised users. See, most people saw these companies like Yada as banks. Remember, Graham Stephan even said, I bought a bank. I just bought a bank. But this isn't quite accurate. These are fintech companies, not banks. They're not holding anyone's money. They're not FDIC insured. They have a bank they work with that is FDIC insured, and that's where your money is sent to. In this case, the main bank is called Evolve. Normally, mm. this distinction doesn't matter, but when things go wrong, it makes all the difference. So does the distinction that Fintech companies like Yada don't work directly with Evolve. They have a middleman called Synapse. Now, I want you to think of Synapse as an adapter. From old tech to new tech, it's kind of like your iPhone dong. I'm confused and this sounds stupid. Well, remember that? Connecting a lightning cable to a headphone jack? That's Synapse, connecting banks to Fintech. And I know I'm not exactly an- Why can't you just say it's a middleman? Why can't, you, why can't you just say it's a middle, man? You already said it. Why do you need to explain it? Expert on this. So I brought in someone who is to explain what happened because the next part gets kind of confusing. My name is Jason Mikula. You know, I spent about over a decade in fintech and banking, including at Goldman Sachs. So I have, I have some experience in the sector. What actually has gone wrong here? So the sort of proximate cause was he did not name what he was, which means his position was shit. That's instantaneously what happens. Listen, 
if you had a golden uh, gold, uh, you know, if you had well, honestly, any uh, any of the big bank, big investment, big in, big hedge fund uh, people, you're gonna instantaneously start with, I was X at Goldman Sachs, okay? That's how it works. You you you, unless you were shit tier. You're you're gonna you're just gonna say oh I worked at BlackRock no 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 no. Also, if you were a big boy at that uh, at a company as big as that, uh, you would not be doing this interview, obviously. So whatever this guy is, I already am assuming that what he says is stupid and shit and not exactly and not exactly there. Was on Saturday, May eleventh, uh, Synapse which is this technology middleware provider or banking as a service provider, revoked Evolve Bank's access to what in the court filings is being referred to as the dashboard, uh, which is basically Synapse's IT systems, uh, including actual ledger information. And so when Synapse revoked access to that information on Saturday, May 11th, Evolve- Oh, I get it. So this is what's happening. Synapse is a middleman, and they they are providing banking as uh, a service in the in the sense that they provide you, they have access to actually work with the banks, but you, uh, and they just give you their own program where you can uh, where you can do things, you know, make orders and uh, uh, something like that. That's what Yota did. A, a, bit, a lot of big companies have their own programs and things like that to allow you to do this because the alternative is uh, they send you emails what they want you to do, which is stupid. So that is what they effectively, uh, that that is what they uh, stopped allowing them to do. They just took away their ability to use their programs, aka they could not place any orders, they could not do anything anymore. For what reason, who knows? Functionally froze all of those programs by ceasing to process payments. So Evolve's decision to respond to Synapse revoking that access is what led to users being unable to access their funds beginning on May 11th and continuing through to the present. People are saying- Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Information on Saturday, May 11th, Evolve functionally froze all of those programs by ceasing to process payments. So Evolve's decision to respond to Synapse revoking that access is what led to users being unable to access their funds beginning on May 11th and continuing through to the present. That shouldn't work like that. That, that should... Am I missing something? That should not work like that. Or banking as a service provider revoked okay, okay. Evolve Bank's access to what in the court filings is being referred to as the dashboard. Wait, uh, revoked whose? Revoked Evolve Bank's okay. access to what in the court filings is being referred to as the dashboard, uh, which is basically Synapse's IT systems, okay. uh, including actual ledger information and so when synapse revoked access to that information on saturday may 11th from evolve Ev yeah from evolve not revolve Oops. functionally froze all of those programs by ceasing to process payments i i don't get it is this guy misspeaking because what he just said, how does this make sense? So, uh, the, the chain here should be extremely simple. There is Synapse, which is the middleman, and they, uh, and they handle what this company wants to do, and then the bank, bank, uh, the bank just backs it up. But the way he says this is like, Evolve, which is the bank, is canceling this and because he's misspeaking on something because this chain doesn't make sense. So Evolve's decision to respond to Synapse revoking that access is what led to users Revolve's decision for Synapse to revoking being unable to access their funds beginning on May 11th and continuing through to the present. 
Yeah, he's definitely misspeaking something because this doesn't make logical sense. Huh, interesting. But it's effectively what he is saying is that Evolve Bank is has just chosen to stop any transactions through Synapse, which means any uh, anything that is supposed to go through the Evolve uh, Evolve Bank that goes through the software of Synapse is not going to be processed by evolve because for some reason they're stopping the that's what i get this is so conf he must be misspeaking about something here by ceasing to process payments so evolve's decision to respond to synapse revoking that access is what led to users being unable to access their funds beginning on may 11th and continuing through to the present people what? Or this is like an extremely long-winded and stupid way of saying that Yatta has absolutely no involvement into this. It's just Synapse slash uh, Evolve or Revolt or whatever, they, uh, whatever they're called having problems with each other and now duking it out in court. Which sounds more reasonable, but that's, uh, that's such a long-winded and nonsensical way of actually phrasing that. That's insane. People are saying, oh, it's FDIC insured why isn't that working yeah so it is end users confusion is entirely understandable right one of the great successes of the american banking sector and american banking regulation is that you generally speaking don't have to worry about whether or not your money is safe however that in this case uh, and it's, it's not the only case has engendered some confusion for end users who see fdic insured and and ah, I get the problem. Here. That is, I, this is safe. My money's safe. I'm gonna get my money back. Yeah, yeah. That only works if the bank goes under effectively. That that is the insurance. Uh, we we have. I I don't remember the name. What what actually governs this? It is probably the FDIC or whatever the fuck they're talking about. Uh, but yes. This does not do anything if the money is frozen. <laughs> it, it only works if your money vanishes because of, you know, their mishandling of funds or the company goes under. And then there is a certain amount that is insured that the country will cover. It may be all of it. It may be a part of it. It may be whatever. Now, what is FDIC insurance and what does it do? It protects depositors and users in the event that a bank fails yeah, a bank has not failed okay yeah at least he understands this part and is explaining it in a non-autistic way here uh, and so there is no direct role for the fdic to step in if evolve had failed the fdic would step in seize the bank uh, and sort of figure out the next steps. That's obviously not what's unfolding here. Right, so if you have money frozen, it is FDIC insured from a bank failure. But in this case, banks haven't failed. It's the in-between layer that has, meaning your funds are stuck until this is fixed. But it's not exactly clear when that will be because Evolve and Synapse can't agree on who owes what. Well, if there's a court case on this, this is literally going to be people have their money frozen for multiple years situation. Founder of Synapse says it's all in Evolve's control. We are doing everything we can to release funds. Meanwhile, Evolve says Synapse's records are wrong. Quote, recent ledgers and data do not align with the actual movement of funds in and out of Evolve. Basically, someone is lying or mm. even worse, doesn't know what the truth is. A bank lying? Oof, man, that sounds... Well, who would have expected that one? Oh, boy. Is And this isn't a disagreement about a few Wait. pennies. It's $150 million being argued about. But according to new reporting oh, no, from no, the no, information, no, no. such discrepancies were known about... I do not use Evolve for a moment that I thought, uh-oh. ...for at least two years before the revoked dashboard and Synapse's bankruptcy. Meaning this could have been avoided, but it wasn't leaving a bankruptcy trustee to pick up the pieces and hundreds of thousands of accounts mm. frozen. And we don't know who owes who what or when we'll find out. But all I have to say is who cares? People need their money back. They, they were told these fintech programs money. were sick. Yeah, oh, coffeezilla, make it about the struggling idiots that put money in a YouTuber bank. If now they're stuck. Look, after talking to the people affected, I get it. Banking is complicated, especially as I spoke to Jason, that became super clear. 
But historically, this hasn't stopped us from helping the elite when complex banking problems come up. Remember Silicon Valley Bank? And look, I know uh... it's a different story. But back then, we moved heaven and earth to make sure startup founders got their money back beyond the FDIC insurance limit. Out of concern for the rich and powerful, we bent the rules. And all I'm saying is, I Yeah, but the rich and powerful matter, not these idiots who put money in a YouTube bank. It that this is also not a traditional FDIC insurance case. But dare I say we give regular Americans the same level of urgency and empathy we gave to Silicon Valley founders when we Okay, I have a feeling the last two minutes are just gonna be purely classic CoffeeZilla playing on Oh, look at the poor idiots who obviously got scammed and now they're sad that they got scammed. I'm done. Later.